So hello and welcome to the start of this vlog. This is going to be all this MGB B series engine that I've got to do. Um, it's out of an MGB LE uh, limited edition model uh, rubber bumper. The customer wants it built to just a high fast road spec. Um, so nothing race about it. We're going to do a slight bit of porting, a fast road camshaft kit. Um, slightly lightened flywheel and a balanced bottom end. Every component's going to be replaced and it's going to be a fully documented engine. So we're taking photos from how it is at the moment to right at the end. So I thought, you know what? I'm going to YouTube it as well. So this is going to be, unless I miss a video because I'm stupid sometimes, but this is going to be one where it's completely stripped, completely machined, cleaned, everything all on one video. So the first thing to do is to, to tear it apart and do an inspection on the components as it comes apart. Thank you for watching. Uh, I've come across one little problem. It's nothing major, but we was thinking this was the original engine out of it. But if I can show you one of these, that's a standard head bolt washer, which is quite thick. And what somebody's done is put two thin head bolt washers on. Um, so straight, straight away, I, I know someone's had the head off it at some stage, but it was also a bit giveaway because when the customer bought the engine over actually running in the car, I could tell that the cylinder head and the bottom end was two different colours where if it was original it wouldn't be like that but so far I mean it, it's coming apart okay these are just little things that I can uh, let the customer know so the other thought thing that I thought I would show is the um, the rocker shaft is ready to come off now so we just lift the split pin out then it's a washer and a spring to get the rocker shaft out of this pillar here it has this tiny little grub screw here which is held in with one of the head with one of the rocker shaft washers so now the rocker shaft can be lifted off I can get on that a bit better then it's actually quite tight and then basically all this will come apart so you've got the rocker if i move this camera back you'll have a rocker where it's worn it gets a bit stuck then the rocker post which the rocker post lines up in that hole there if i can turn it round so just there and that's what basically positions everything and the stud holes going through all of it but now i can re i can remove all of this and the springs to get this ready for reconditioning then take the push rods out these are normally sat in oil at the bottom because the the oil the the fo the cam follower is like a little bucket so it just gets oil trapped in there so that's all the push rods might even replace those i'm not sure yet So that's the cylinder head off. The customer had a, a complaint of oil consumption on this and straight away there's a big build up of, uh, of carbon in, in number four, well in all the cylinders really, but number four is very bad. Um, but number two is I think where the problem is because it's actually very deep there. So, yeah, we've definitely had an issue somewhere. So that's the cylinder head all stripped now. 
So basically the components to the cylinder head, apart from the studs, are the inlet and exhaust valves, the valve spring, the valve cap, and then stuck onto the cylinder head because of the, um, the oil are these valve spring seats and these just stop the spring biting into the cylinder head if I can get one off. So this cylinder head's now ready to go into the uh, into the acid bath. In fact, when it goes through the wash, that'll bring them them seats off. I was just trying to get one off to. So that's what they look like. They just sit on the bottom of the spring, and then there's two collets that retain the valve into the spring. So in there, there's 16 collets because there's two collets per per valve. Uh, the next job that I'll do is see if I'm reusing the original valves or ordering a set of new valves for it. So I do that by looking at the thickness of how much is left on the edge of the valve there. We don't want a sharp edge on that, it wants to be kept quite thick like that. So I would say these look, well there, the inlet valves are very meaty, the exhaust are about perfect as well so the next thing that I do is measure the stem where the stems going up in the guide so I do that by measuring the part that doesn't go in the guide but I also know the setting for MGBs because I do a fair few of them but I'll measure the that bit there and then I'll measure all the way down the valve to see if there's anywhere and that one has got absolutely nowhere on it at all so basically these will get shot blasted, the stems will get polished, they'll get refaced and they'll get topped, but I'll video that happening anyway. Okay, so that one is worn. I don't know if the camera's picking that up, but up the top here, it's, uh, it's reading 16 on the micrometer, but as you go down, it's reading 15 there. It's actually, apart from burning a lot of oil, it's in quite good condition. The guides are in good condition. The seats look like they've been sealing okay because there's no real heavy black spots. However, I'm doing some basic porting on it, so I'm going to press the guides out uh, just so I can port around where the guide bosses are. And for the for the cost of the guides, I might as well just put new um, new guides in it. So the first job for this is to clean it, go through the acid, clean it, fit the lead-free seats, then push the guides out, port it, and the way we go with that. So. What I'm doing now is I've got to take the flywheel off and continue stripping the engine. The uh, the two studs that were seized in there and there, I've got these quite hot, uh, and uh, with the big gun behind them, not the three eighth gun, they've now come out. Um, all the bolts are undone on this and what's quite interesting is some of the wear this was meant to be in quite a good running engine with just a slight oil consumption problem however when the sump come off it was apparent that there's quite a bit of swarf in the in the sump the oil pump gears are badly worn and then also this is one of the cam follower and I don't know if it's picking up that but that is really badly pitted and also concaved where it's worn. The camshaft has exactly the same kind of wear on it and some of the cam lobes have nearly knocked itself off so I can't imagine it was driving particularly well. That one there is, is really down on lift and then the other thing that I noticed is when I'm looking down through the engine I can see at some stage this block has been linered all four cylinders have got a liner in them so it definitely has been a part before but what's really bad about this engine is if I can find the magnet all this that you can see here is boring swarf 
because that is all metal on the end of the magnet so it looks to me like at some stage in this MGB's life the engine has been stripped it's been machined to take these to take liners and this is boring swarf out the cylinders which has obviously sat behind a part of the engine and um, and they haven't cleaned it out it might have been a, a liner in situ job which is quite difficult to do but you definitely wouldn't get all the swarf out the big M bearings are at standard which is good and that one journal that's out so far hasn't got any wear on it however the upper shell has worn straight through to the to the copper and these are old Vanderveld bearings as well so they're not original bearings they are lead copper and then when taking these the main caps off <clears throat> what's good about these is they have a number there that one's number two so number one cap can only go in one place the center cap can only go in one place the rear cap can only go in one place and then two and four are marked with two and four so once again that it doesn't look like it's really ever had a very nice oil change Vanderveld bearings again at standard size when you've got one of the cap bolts out you can then use one of them to screw into the two outer caps and the centre cap to release it these are the thrust washers which once again are not really showing a lot of wear by the looks of it we check the that's worn through to the copper I think the fact that someone's put the copper bearings in it has probably saved the crankshaft in a way the other thing I will show you because I'm going to put it back on time lapse in a minute to finish filming is in here and here this is the oil pressure relief valve which is a little valve on a spring which moves like that so when the oil pressure is built up the valve is pushed back by the oil pressure and then it it releases it back into here back into the sump the MG engine for Paul that we stripped wasn't much good so um, after a discussion with uh, Paul we've decided to find another engine and start again so this is a this is a rubber bumper straight out of a scrap car uh, covered in oil still got all the ancillaries on it which are going in the bin I'm hoping because it's so dirty and so oily it's never had any internal work done on it so we're gonna get it all stripped open it up and have a look hopefully this is better than the last attempt looking great to be honest where it's been stored for in a scrap car for a little while water's got in there and uh, set about it in quite a bad way looks like there was a mouse behind there because it's um, there was a load of mousy bedding type stuff but I'll carry on stripping it and see what the rest of it's like this is the distributor drive here which this um, little screw in here is normally a bugger to get out so I just always use an impact driver this is a snap-on impact driver so all you do is hold some pressure on it for the in the direction that you want it to undo and then just give it one good tap of the hammer and then it's basically like a spring and a cam in here so it drives it to undo so that now is undone very easy and then another little trick to get the the distributor and the oil pump drive out of these engines is to use the um, to use one of the threaded studs that old the rocker post down so it's a UN it's a 5 16th UNF drive in there 
the thread in there. So we just screw that in and then you can just pull it out dead easy. So that's that part out. As I said earlier, this is a rubber bumper engine. And the difference between a chrome and a rubber bumper is quite easy, it's off this front plate here. A chrome bumper is cut away as a different engine mount design. So that's one quick way of telling the difference between the two MGB engines. Next bit to come off is the front timing cover. Timing gear. On MGBs they normally have two different styles, a simplex and a duplex. This is a simplex which is a single chain and this is the tensioner here, this is sprung loaded tensioner but we'll be converting this over to a duplex so it's just a bit stronger. So the MGB stripped down, this is the chrome bumper, sorry the rubber bumper MGB B series engine which assumption the car is absolutely beautiful. The engine is the complete opposite unfortunately. Um, I've just quickly ran through, it, it's got liners fitted and I showed you the boring bar swarf. Uh, I showed you the wear on the, the cam and the cam buckets however that wasn't the worst cam bucket after taking them out I've stripped a lot of b-series engines and I think this unfortunately is one of the worst um, the the grooves in this are oh well I've never seen anything like it to be honest absolutely shocking this this one here is worn away I don't know if you can see the wall thickness this one's warm but not bad and when you look at that the wall thickness is it's half the half the wall thickness on that it's just worn away at the top so that started to wear and then been giving it a bit of a wobble um, so what I do need to do is measure the block because I should imagine the block is is in just as bad a state when I put my finger in there that's the boring bar swarf that I showed you all earlier I'm amazed it didn't make it through the, the, the oil pump strainer. So this is the strainer here. And you can see some of this boring bar swarf is just picked up at the bottom of the strainer, but the strainer has really done its job. That just goes to show this is an old engine, but that, that strainer has been very efficient at stopping the boring bar swarf getting into the engine because the bearings don't show the kind of wear the rest of the engine is showing. The crankshaft is in relatively good condition but if I just unclip the GoPro and then show here this is in the oil ways, this has come off the crankshaft, I haven't touched this this is more boring bar swarf and I'm putting it back on there because when I strip an engine nowadays, I, I do a full report and I take some photos with my GoPro and send it and I, I really feel like my customer really needs to see this engine. Um, the Conrods, where that swarf has been flicked around, it's destroyed the Conrods. I mean these, well, I refuse to refit these Conrods, the customer's going to have to um, have these replaced. The, like I say, the, the, the engine's been linered, the rings are all stuck together, it's not in a very good condition. 
Uh, one little trick I will show you actually is to check that con rods are straight and not bent, you can always tell by looking at this wear mark here. When it's worn nice and smooth like this, the con rod is straight. If the conrod's got any kind of bend in it, this would zigzag either that way or that way. So that's a good quick way of telling if you've got a bent rod. But it's also had a heat problem at the top of this piston here. That's that's nipped. Whether that's down to the bore size of the um, of the liners if they've not been bored out correctly or honed correctly. But at, at the minute, this old MGB's in a sorry state. So what I'm going to do now is take some photos with my iPad and uh, fill in my report for it this is the second engine uh, the first engine which I showed on strip down had some really bad swarf issues and everything so we decided not to run it this is the replacement engine which I've completely stripped it's been through the acid it's gone through the hot tank a few times just to wash some more uh, grime off it but this is a uh, this thing here is um, a water drain for the block which this was completely blocked so I've um, worked all the, well, the these engines they suffer with a, a build up of casting sand left in the bottom of the of the cooling system it's really difficult to get out so basically I work with a really long drill bit through the waterways and try and just break it up and then break through to this drain as well um, so I've got all that flowing nice now so what I'm going to do with this is is rebore it today um, so that's progress on that. The other thing that I've done on this engine, which I'll um, which I'll show you now, is the replacement pistons and rods which come out of that engine, because the the other engine where it had swarf in the engine and the the engine had been rotating, the the swarf had been hitting the side of the rod and had damaged all four rods quite bad. So we decided not to run them. So on the replacement rods out of the replacement engine. At the moment, I'm going to re, uh, recondition, recondition them. So I've removed three of the pistons. This is number four. So I'll just show you this sun and this sun and rod press in action. And then I've got all different size pin presses. And then this arbor here, which I don't know if you can see, has got different attachments, which are these, and they sit around the the pin boss of the piston to stop any kind of um, damage or or it breaking up and making them impossible to move so with the piston installed like that we can just switch the pump on then the ram comes down just hold it all nice and steady and centralized let the rem take the pressure like that and then with the lever, if we push down, that's what actually then puts the, the heavy pressure through it. And there we go, that's just released now. So then we just keep the press on, let the pin press all the way out the piston. And then just release that. And then we can remove the, the con rod. My next job on this is to um, balance the con rods and then recondition them. So at the minute there's slight surface rust on it where this engine hadn't run for a little while so what I'm going to do is because this rod is getting completely reconditioned I'm going to clean all the all the beam of the rod up and um, and then resize it and whatnot and check for balance so I'll, I'll record that happening too. For the new MGB engine or the replacement block um, is on the borer I've bored one bore so I've got to just finish off the others um, my customer wanted good quality pistons and the only thing that's available at the moment is county but after a bit of shopping around we managed to find some new old stock plus 30 AE pistons so the quality of these is, uh, is a lot better. I'm going to have to balance them because the, the engine is going to be a balanced with a fast road cam in it so the next thing I'm going to do is just balance these. I've set the tool, I've left it where I've got, well I've measured the first bore that I've bored and it's left me with three thou to hone out. So I'll let this bore do the others and then clean the gasket faces up, new cam bearings, clean all the threads out, reface the head face or block face and away we go. The bar's got to the bottom of the bore 
what I'm going to do is move the cutter away from the bore so where the cutter's at the front and then just ease the block back a little bit nip the clamp back up contract the cat's paw slightly engage the gear and then just lift the cutter out then just use the hook to flick the cutter out and then on to the next ball. So that's the MG Beal board now. So I'm going to skim the block next and then hone it to size. So the next job to do on the um, 1800 MG engine is to reface the top of the block. I've cleaned all the gasket faces up. I've cleaned all the core plug holes up. The block's been through the acid for hours uh, to clean all the old oil out of it, but I've also gone down the oil holes uh, with a with one of these long brushes, which are which are there. It's a big long oil gallery brush so, brush so I've been through them as well so I'm going to clean the top of the block face up on the head skimmer and then hone it to size do the cam bearings and then it's ready for final prep a few hours in the cleaner and uh, we'll start assembling it So that's the block face all refaced, that took eight thousandths of an inch off the top of it to get it nice and flat. <clears throat> the slight difference with the finish on this is I've left it as a rough ground finish. Uh, I've done that because that just helps grip the gasket. Um, it's a standard style gasket which, that I mean it's, it is super smooth but it's just got a slight texture to it and that just helps the gasket from moving around. I'm going to shamp for the top of the ball now and then hone it to size, clean all the thread holes up on the head face and then deburr it and then it's uh, ready for its uh, new cam bearings and final wash. So <clears throat> the next thing that I'm doing on the um, MGB engine is to hone the ball to size. Um, I've bored this out, I've left about three thousandths of an inch to come out in honing which will give me the right depth and the right um, cross hatch finish. So I've got it all mounted in the machine, I've set the stops on the, on the um, honing machine so the next thing to do is to switch the honing oil on and get honing. So that's the first pass with the honer. So the next thing I'm gonna do is check what clearance I've got now and see roughly how much we've got to come off it. So that's it, that should, it, that should be it all honed to size. So I'm just gonna check it now with the bore gauge. So, so that's absolutely smack on the right. Um, the right bore size. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to give it half an hour just to cool back down where the honing stones have uh, been in there. It does generate a little bit of heat. Nothing that you can feel actually, but um, and then I'll check it again. And then I'll just, after I've checked it, then with virtually no pressure on, I'll just go over them again just to get rid of the line that the bore gauge moves in. But that's another part of this MGB engine complete. So the MGB has been through the cleaner a few times now. It's been in for about four, five or six hours. So I know it's all nice and clean. And what we're gonna do now is fit the, the core plugs. And these are saucer style core plugs. So with these, ceramic the holes, push the core plug in and then just hit them so they're flat and that will lock them in. There's four of these on an MGB. One at the rear, three on the side. So 
So while I've got the block up on its end, I've knocked the rear core plug in, uh, so the ceramic's just sitting on that. And what I'm going to do is just fit two of the gallery bungs for the ends. Oh, I also I don't use ceramic on the gallery bungs, I use uh, Loctite. The other thing that I make sure that I do when I'm putting the ceramic in is making sure that the ceramic runs down into the corners of the, the recess for the core plugs, so just like that. Just because if it was going to leak it would probably start at a corner. forgot to do on the MGB is because this is a replacement block um, this here is the engine number so I'm gonna have to put his engine number onto the replacement block now every casting all the casting number on on the two engines is exactly the same it is it's just the engine number here that I want to replace so these could be quite tricky to get out a lot of people grind them out and then try and just re-rivet them but what I worked out is if you get a really good sharp chisel and get underneath the rivet most of the time you can then get the rivet out so you just hit it all the way round and you want the chisel nice and sharp so it gets underneath the rivet and also it doesn't really do a lot of damage to the actual plate then although this plate here is not important because this is going in the bin so the MGB and the COSI need one more coat of paint each that's a naturally aspirated Cosworth that I'm building for for a guy so I'll let this paint just go off a, off a little bit and then while it's still tacky, go over it with another good coat of paint and uh, they should both look quite nice then. Right, so on the MGB crank, the first thing once I've got the crank mounted into the crank grinder is to make sure that it's running true in the chucks of the crank grinder. So we use this DTI and I always check it in four places. I check it on the mains and I also check it on the oil seal faces or where the oil seal will run because what we don't want to do is grind the crank and it be too far offset where the crank will be doing that in the oil seal which will cause wear and then eventually a bad leak so the first place I'm going to check it is on the front and the rear main and then I'll set it up where I'm checking it just off this part here and then just off this part here that's the crank now running true um, you probably saw that I was initially moving these screws here, this, this four. So the, sorry, there's not this three. Uh, there's three screws. And what that does is that moves the chuck. So I did it on the rear and the front main first. And then the oil seal. And this here would basically be where an oil seal would run as well off the front fully. So now I know that's running true, the next thing I need to do is set up the fingers because I always do the big ends first. So I need to know what the size of the big end journal is standard 
and then I put them settings into here and then that sets this finger up and then I'll set the rest of the fingers up so it grinds the crank properly the first thing I want to do is I don't know if the camera will pick it up is in here there's a little window and basically when I move that up and down there's like a little mark and I want to set that roughly to the middle so I know that I can go backwards off the crank with the stone and forwards to cut off the stone what can happen <coughs> um, is that could be set where it's only got say five thou of movement to cut in because somebody's wound the wheel and wound the wheel and wound the wheel and what will happen is you just get halfway through grinding the crank because the first undersize <coughs> is um, is ten thou so uh, and, and then the machine will be hard against it stops so you won't be able to grind the crank so all these basic settings on the crank grinder are, are what's really important on grinding the crank so what I'm doing now is just moving the crank number four and number one big end so it's in line with the uh, wheel head and then the next thing I want to do is adjust this finger here and then bring the wheel towards the stone, sorry, the wheel towards the crank. Nice and easy. And then I'm letting the crank grinder sit on this finger here. And then I'm watching for the gap in the wheel and I'm bringing the wheel towards the crank. So what you can see here is how bad the crank is marked up quite, quite bad. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write down all the crankshaft data now uh, so I know what I've got to grind to and then I'll, um, I'll show some of the crank being ground. Well that's my MGB crank all ready to grind now so um, what I'll do is I'll just show you how cool it looks as it starts to grind. do is I'll just bring the suds on now so what I'll do is on this chart here on this dial here that's where it started to cut on three and what I'll do is as a reminder I'll just set this dial which at the moment this dial is for doing the mains so this is redundant but if I set it to three, I'll know that on three is where this crank started to cut or grind. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in half a thou at a time. I'm not going to rush it. I see a lot of people that try and take too much of a bite out of a crank and uh, I, don't, I don't agree with that. Take the time, half a thou at a time. Also do it on the, as, it's coming, as the crankshaft is coming down this way so now I know that I've got a cut of a of two thou what I'm going to do is move the crankshaft into the radius on each side so we're going to do the right hand side first and that's the noise where it, the, wheel, the side of the wheel is just hitting the side of the crank And then what I'm going to do is take another half a thou and then start to move to the left hand side. So that's the big ends ground on the MGB. So what I'm going to do now is engage this part of the machine which grinds the mains. I'm going to set up my uh, continuous gauge. So I'll set that up where it's... Uh, oh it needs adjusting. Um, where it shows that I need to take 10 thou off. That's the crank ground and polished and it does look uh, absolutely stunning once it's all been polished and everything so what I'm doing now is I'm letting the coolant spin out the wheel and I'm going to polish the crankshaft now 
So the first job I've got to do is take it out the crank grinder and then weigh it and make a note of the weight. In the customer's job sheet, I've wrote down what the crank's ground to and what oversized bearings I'm using for it. So now what I'm going to do is put the crankshaft weight in, the balance the pistons and the conrods, and, uh, and carry on with the, the, the build for him. Next job for the MGB is to balance the crankshaft assembly. So the thing I'm going to do first is balance the crank. I put all the crank's details into the balancing machine and then the computer's now calculating the outer balance. So I'm going to pause it at that because it's calculated it, switch the machine off. I'm going to print a working copy of the initial balance. But basically it's telling me that this side of the crankshaft is out by 29 grams at 220 degrees and this side of the crankshaft is out by 14 grams at 25 degrees so the next thing I've got to do is just plot where that is on the crank and then just take some metal off I'm now quickly just checking the balance of the front pulley and that's a little bit out as well so I'm just going to get that in And there we go that just shows how sensitive the balancer is with that with that slight little drill mark there that's bought that side of the crank right in the next thing that i'm doing on the mgb is balancing the pistons um, i found the lightest one and reset the scales and now straight away the i mean these are brand new good quality pistons and this one here is 3.2 grams heavy so I'm going to have to lighten that and then the next one we'll check is this one here that's 1.3 grams heavy so I'm going to take a little bit of weight out of that and that one also is 1.6 grams heavy so I'll take a bit of weight out of that as well so the first one I'm going to do is the heaviest which I've taken the rings off that already <coughs> and uh, I'll show how I get the weight out of them in fact I'll show you now so what I'm going to do is I see a lot of people they've tried drilling holes down here lightning round here and making a right mess trying to hand grind them and whatnot but I'm going to put this in the lathe and then really carefully just take some of the weight out of this boss here even if I just bring it to where this original part of the machining is and then just bring it out to about here and that should hopefully take off the weight that I need so what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave the rings on the scales and then just keep coming backwards and forwards once I've machined it. So the pistons that the piston that was uh, three and a half grams heavy is now down to oh I'll just show you 0.8 of a gram. Um, if it's if it's less than a gram I'm quite happy with that and, and especially with this only being a, a a standard road engine with a cam and a slight gas flow this is a this is a, a Sunday car basically. Um, so as long as I get below a gram I'm, I'm really happy with that and I'll show you what it looks like once it's been machined so that there is a piston that hasn't been machined and then I've set the the lathe up so it puts a really nice radius on and then I've just taken a little bit of weight out of there near on not a lot at all really I mean if I compare it to that one there you can probably see the difference but it's enough to get them as close to zero as I can right the next thing to do is to recondition the conrods so to do this I'm I've, I've already shot blasted them because uh, I wanted to just clean all the little bits of rust off them and uh, and and get them back to cast iron and I could see any imperfections and things like that in them so what I'm going to do now is first of all balance them because the engine is balanced albeit a standard balance or a standardish road engine I'm still going to balance the rods after that I'm going to change the standard big end stud and nut for an ARP stud and nut then I'm going to torque the conrods up 
and then check to see if I need to resize the con rods. See if there's any ovality or, or if they've shrunk or anything like that. And then the final thing for me to do is to just check that they're straight. The next job that I'm doing on the MGB is I'm fitting the new ARP big end stud and nut kit uh, and also checking the roundness of the big ends as well. So the first thing I'm doing on the MGB Conrods is taking the original stud and nuts out. So I just undo the nuts and then with a copper hide hammer just tap the original stud out. Then what I could do is just make sure that these two faces are really clean. I smell acid actually. So I've been in the acid bath. Um, and then the next thing to do is to check that this radius in this part of the conrod here doesn't interfere with the ARP shoulder because we want the ARP stud to pull down on the flats not on the shoulder or on the radius so that's just a case of fitting them and then checking them but what i've got to do first is just clean all the faces up um, and, and just give them a quick wash off so i'll crack on them and do that do I've, I've washed all the rods out I've, um, I've made sure there's no burrs cleaned them all just gave them a slight emery across there um, before I measure them up I've made sure this oil bore squirters uh, unblocked and um, so what I'm going to do now is see what these fit like so I'm going to use a little bit of ARP grease on here just to help them come down and then just make sure I've got plenty of clearance so what I'll do is I'll mount one up and then I'll discuss what I'm doing a bit more. Talked up all of the, um, I've talked up all of the con rods. I've put all the ARP bolts in and torqued the bolt. So the next thing I want to do is, is measure this, uh, this circle here. So when you look at a bearing book, I would thought I thought I just would discuss the bearing books because they can come across as a bit complicated. But what we've got, let me try and get this focused in a bit better. What we've got at the top is what the bearing is, what the layout of the crankshaft is, what the material is, what the diameter of the crank is what the outside diameter or the inside diameter of the housing is on the conrod and the mains and then it's bearing thickness bearing width clearance so what i'm looking for is on the mgb i want to measure on the conrod this part here so i'm straight into this column here and i go down to to the big ends which is aeb and then i look and the bottom tolerance is 2 inch and 21 thou and the top tolerance is 2 inch 21 and a half thou so i've set my dti up to the bottom tolerance so basically what i want when i measure the conrod is it bang on zero or it can go into plus half a thou so to do that i've set up the dti I'm going to put the soft jaws back into the vise because I don't want to grab. Oops, I don't want to grab the uh, the conrod and mark it. Not that I would, because this vise has actually got smooth jaws in it, not not grippy jaws. So with the conrod in there, then what I'm going to do is just put my my bore gauge in. I don't know how much this is picking up actually. Let me move that to there. So I'm going to put my bore gauge into the conrod and then really carefully measure the size. And that there is absolutely 
bang on zero. Let me see if I can show you here. What I'm going to do is measure it in a few different positions. So that's measuring it there. I'm going to measure it there and I'm going to measure it there too. That there is about two tenths over. So it's still well within tolerance. And the same with that. So that's that con rod. Okay. All I'm going to do next is check for straightness. That con rod there has failed. That's a thou one thousandth of an inch tight across here. Uh, and I've already set this to the bottom tolerance. So I'm going to remachine this one. Same with that. That's a thou tight. And that one's spot on. So two are okay, two need machining. So to machine them, we go over to the the Conrod home, which <clears throat> what's quite lucky about this is the Conrods are tight. So it's only a case of machining metal out of the conrod if they was too loose i would have to reduce the circle and then remachine it through um, which i'm sure i will end up doing a set so you will see it <coughs> so um so i've set up the conrod home if i just stop it i can explain it so basically this conrod mandrel um, is connected to this foot pedal down here and then when I press the foot pedal, it expands the stones and then puts, um, tells you basically how much you can take off here. I mean, most of it is done by feel, to be fair. Um, I, I do use the gauge as a, as a, as a, a rough guideline on where I'm going, but um, I, I don't rush it. I take my time. I try and keep the rod um, as cool as possible and keep uh, some honing oil on the stone um so what i'll do is i'll get this rod home to size and then i'll um fit the pistons to the rods right the next job on the mgb is to fit the pistons to the con rods uh, now these are an, in an interference fit design so what that means is the con rod is too small for the gudgeon pin so the only way we fit these is by heating the small end of the conrod up. Um, you can do this with a blow lamp, oxygen acetylene. It's not really the right way to do it, um, but you can do it. I use this sun, uh, sun and rod heater, um, which I've had for a few years. It's it's brilliant machine. Uh, the model number is a CRH50. Um, so what I do first is mark how the con rod fits to the piston so i always keep the gudgeon pin to the front side of the piston before it's installed and then i'll i know that the rod fits that way so i will then put the rod in the con rod heater like that so when i take the rod out i lift it out and put it in then the tricky bit is you've got to be pretty fast to get the gudgeon pin into the con rod without it all nipping up if it nips up we're in trouble because then we have to try and press against here to get it to all connect basically um so yeah not good so while the the rod is heating up i make sure i've got the right kind of uh, punch to press it in or slide it in i make sure that the gudgeon pin even before i mount it onto this machine is um floating in and out the piston uh, very easy and then what I do is once one rod has been in the rod heater for a little while I then put the second rod in. I've also put the pistons in order of cylinder one two three four and then I've done the same with the con rods 
So I'll now put that one in there. And then what I do is, you can buy uh, temperature wax to keep uh, an eye on the, the uh, temperature of the conrod. But, I mean, I've done a few now, so I can almost guarantee the, the, si the, the, the temperature's right by looking at the, the discoloration start on the end of the rod. What you don't want to do is blue the rod or get it where it changes colour too much because then it's no good. Let's get these fitted. That's all the um, con rods fitted to the to the pistons now. So what I'll do is I just, as it starts to cool, just put a little bit of um, 2050 oil around there so it just soaks its all way around the uh, gudgeon pin and the and the gudgeon pin boss in the in the piston. So they get quite hot now because the the heat dissipates through the piston and the rod so I, I can't actually do anything now with them until they cool right down so On the MGB, I've just been and collected some bits from the powder coaters for it, which I think would be um, what are going to make it look quite nice. So I've had the front cover powder coated and the sump as well. So they look uh, really good, brand new. So with the MG, I've got the back plate on and I've done that so basically I can uh, bolt the engine to an engine stand. So with that all in, what I'm going to do now is turn it over and gap the piston rings. is fitted pistons one and four first and then I've used the <coughs> ARP piston ring compressor to uh, to fit them these are fantastic I've then um, made sure I put ARP lube onto the big end bolts or stud and nut on the thread and underneath the nut so it doesn't pull I've then used my ARP <coughs> stretch gauge 
because the stud and nut needs to be stretched to around six thousandths of an inch. Um, they recommend it's 35 foot pounds. So what I do is I always zero the gauge. I go to 35 foot pound and then I measure the stretch. ARP have been doing this a long time, so they're very accurate most of the time. Uh, well, in fact, all of the time, they don't normally get anything wrong. So <clears throat> with that done, what I've got to do, oh, also I've gapped the rings. So what I've got to do now is turn the engine over and then repeat the process on cylinders two and three. Um, and then I'll show you what I do on the oil pumps. Modify the oil pump. Um, and the reason for that is they don't flow too good, MGB oil pumps. Um, there's no pressure side to this pump, apart from the pressure the pump makes, as in pressure relief. There's no pressure relief valve in here. This is just what the pump makes, it will make. But, I don't know if we can see in, oops, I don't know if we can see in this pump, but, down here yeah I'm, it's just about picking it up i can see it that's casting marks which is it's not good it's it's really dirty i mean there's no bits breaking off but even in that pit uh, even in that port there it's just not pretty at all so i'm going to tidy all that up now basically how this works is let me get the strainer The oil strainer sits in the bottom of the sump, like that. The bottom part of the oil pump then sits on the strainer like that. And then the top part like that. And that's what feeds the engine. So basically, all the way down this hole here, and all this needs neatening up. Then, basic, then what happens is once it gets to this part of the pump, it then feeds the bottom of the pump through here. So it comes up here, and then it goes into this part here and then goes through the rest of the engine. So it feeds the bottom of the pump through this here, off the strainer, and then works its way through here and then feeds the rest of the engine through that tiny little port down there. And like I just said, it's, uh, it's full of old casting burrs. It's not very pretty at all, so um, I modify them. And I also modify them so it feeds the top of the oil pump as well. So what I'm gonna do now is take this into the gas flowing room, sort out this hole down here, just bore through there a little bit, tidy up all through there, tidy up all in the bottom of these ports here, make sure there's no horrible burrs on the gear. And then that's that. The oil pressure relief on an MGB engine is done through a plunger and a spring. That sits in the engine in the main oil gallery and then when it builds up enough pressure that just basically push the oil pressure pushes that back and then once it gets to about here there's another there's another hole in the block and then the oil just bypasses straight back down into the sump. So that's how the oil pressure works on an MGB. Fit lead free seats. So these are the scented steel lead free seats and I'm going to run them on the exhaust side of the cylinder head. So I've set up my machine to, to counterbore it out to take the seat. And then what I'm going to do is also just gently port the cylinder head just to help the performance because it's running a, a slightly modified camshaft. <laughs>
So I'm going great guns with the MGB cylinder head, but me and Sam, or Sam's doing the cross flow, we've just stopped for a bit of lunch though. So I want to shout out Crepo Clock in Newbury. If anyone's in Newbury and wants something tasty to eat, that's the place to be. I'll show you what, what we've got. Bacon and egg, nice. So the next job for the MGB is to press in some new inlet guides. So I'm using my Comec machine for that. And I don't need to actually take a measurement for these because I've already got pre-made um, the right spaces for it, which MGB inlet. So basically I set the machine up I can press the old guide straight out. That's the um, well, that's the new inlet guides installed. The cylinder head that I've just uh, spent all day modifying um, has failed pressure test. Um, when I was gas flowing it had loads of porosity in the port, which I did notice, but I didn't think it would be too much of a problem. So I carried on with it and uh, and final check for me was to re-pressure test it again. It passed the first pressure test before the gas flowing was done, but that's the problem with these old castings. You can hit a bit of porosity and that's it, game over. So I've just stripped another cylinder head to um, do that in the morning. So that's in the acid at the minute. So while that's in the acid, I'm going to carry on and just get the oil pump done. So the first job is to bore out the main feed to the pump. So I'm going to do that just by holding the pump in the vise and then letting the drill just follow the original hole until I get through to the to the bottom
and that's it I've drilled down to about 10 mil below that that step there so what I could do now is I'll do the rest by hand with a die grinder just finish off this end but the big step that was down this main feed is now virtually gone so I'm happy with the first stage So that's it, that's the pump all high flowed. Now that's all nice rounded off, all the flashings are out of it, I've polished it all through. I've bought out the main oil feed to the pump and I've also given it a light relief at the top so basically it will feed the bottom and the top of the pump. So the only thing I'll probably have to do is just up the spring a little bit in the oil pressure relief valve to compensate for the, for the groove at the top there. But that's all stuff that I can deal with later. Yesterday the final checks on the MGB cylinder head that I'd spent hours porting and putting lead free seats in it uh, When I did the final test it had some porosity in it and uh, it was leaking on the pressure tester So it wasn't any good to use But because I'd spent so much time on it and I'm going on holiday soon and I want to get it done I, uh, I was a bit fed up and I chucked it straight in the skip so today's another day, I've chilled out a little bit now, but I was going to get it out and show you the um, the hole in it, but I'm not jumping in the skip and it's a little bit too far away, but there it is. So yeah, that's a waste of probably five hours work, but there we are. It's better to check them than to send them out and they have a water leak once they're in, a car, in the car. That's the problem with uh, porting old cylinder heads I suppose but on to the next cylinder head at least we had a spare or at least Paul my customer had a spare um, because the engine was in such a bad way I've been able to his original engine with the with the swarf uh, I've now used what was going to be just a spare core unit for him um, but yeah the, I, I can use that core unit now to make another cylinder head so Last night I quickly stripped it, I took the valve guides out of it and I dropped it in the acid because it was in a bit of a state. So I'm good. I'm going to get it out the acid, which is in my shed, jet wash it, pour it. I'm going to pour it first. Um, like I say, the guides are out of it, so I'm going to pour it first and then I'm going to pressure test it before I spend any time putting seats in it. Which I probably should have done that the first time, but there we go, I didn't. So we'll see what it looks like when it comes out the acid. So the next part of the oil pump is for me to uh, assemble it now. Now it's all been through the cleaner. Just to make sure that there's still no more um, obstructions in there. Make sure it's all nice and clean. So that's the body of the pump. Also the top of the pump because I've been because I've drilled down here. I want to make sure that there's no swarf down there that I can um, get in the way. It's all been blown through anyway. <clears throat> and then the next thing is to lubricate <coughs> the body of the pump. So what I'm going to use for that is just a bit of 2050 running in oil, and then just all the way around the body of the pump, and then down in the bottom ready for the first rotor to go into then with some nice clean rag uh, just make sure the two rotors of the pump haven't got any um, like rust protection on it I mean I have gone over these once so I do know that they're clean but this is the procedure that I do on all of the engine builds I always take the pumps apart and double check them And then what I do is I prime the oil pump um, with build lube. 
And then what that does is it all it straight away is the pump is creating a vacuum to suck the oil out of the sump. A lot of a lot of the time these pumps they come bone dry. And what that means is you normally have to then try and back feed the pump to get oil out of the sump into the pump. So by priming the pump with oil, as soon as the engine starts to turn, it will create a vacuum and pull the oil up from the sump. So I also make sure that I fit it, put the oil into both rotors. The next thing that I thought I would show was um, this part of the gasket here. What I always do is just with my finger, just make a mark on the gasket so I can cut that little bit out so there's no restriction for the pump at all. So that's the second cylinder head for the MG all gas flowed after the first one was porous. Well, good news on the cylinder head, that's passed. That's the cylinder head face all done. So what I'm doing now is skimming the MG flywheel. As you can see here, there's damage from the rivets that attach the friction material to the actual plate. One of them must have come out or come loose or the clutch was worn that bad that, it, that it's been hitting the rivets. <laughs> Yeah, it's pretty bad that, uh, but it's uh, it's ground up real nice now. They do look amazing once they've been on that machine. So I'm getting close to the end of the MGB engine. I've got the cylinder head bolted on. I've set the valve spring installed right correctly. Uh, ground all the valves in, vac tested it. It's all gas flowed as well. I've cleaned all the studs up. So the next job I'm going to do is set up the vernier timing wheel. It's a Kent Cam's vernier timing wheel. Uh, but what I always do is take the chain and the crankshaft pulley off and then check to make sure there's end float on the camshaft with the vernier on it. So I do that, I put a DTI on it and then I just put some pressure on it and then just lever it backwards and forwards just to measure how much end float it's got. And it's got about a thou and a half. So that's fine. The next thing that I do is check that the gears are lined up perfectly. Um, the MGB crank has little shims on the back of the on the back of the end of the crank there, or on the back of the front of the crank, I should say, behind the uh, Woodruff keys. You can take it for granted that these are machined perfectly, and and you know what, Kent Cams, the stuff normally is perfect, but it's always best to double check. One thing that is always quite tight on, on these is the crankshaft and the camshaft pulley is always quite tight getting on. So I just always clean them up a little bit just to make it a bit easier. And then with no chain on, all I do is just use a nice flat steel rule and lean it against the gears to make sure there's not too much run out. And that's that. So now what I can do is get the timing roughly right. So about there, I'm going to set this cam timing up with gauges. So as long as it's quite close, I'm happy with that. I'm going to put the chain on now. Uh, and then the next job I'm going to do is build up the rocker shaft 
So I'm using a new rocker shaft here with the old um, with the old rockers installed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the Liquid Molly build grease for this and make sure I get plenty of build grease on the rocker shaft and then also on the ball and on the tip of the rocker. Uh, and then I'm going to put some on the tip of the valve. Just move this up. The bottom of the push rods and just make sure it's well smothered in the grease just so on initial start up we're going to have no problems with it. What you might have noticed is I had to take it back off. That's because I put I forgot to put these two little shims under here. And what that does is that just puts that just lifts these two posts up a bit and just puts the shaft under the tiniest little bit of pressure. And then I've made sure I've got plenty of the liquid molly build grease on the rocker shaft, underneath the rockers, under the push rods. So the next thing to do is then to torque the head down because although the head's on, it's only these outer bolts that are holding it, not the uh, head bolts that are on the rocker shaft posts. Also, to lock the rocker shaft in place, there's this tiny little screw just here. So that has its own special washer on it which actually has a flat in there as well and that stops it unscrewing so we need to make sure that goes on first and then with some of the ARP grease it's important then just to put it on the platforms so the washers and everything can spin on them if they need to and not snag to give it the correct torque You can use like a light engine oil as well for that, but the proper grease is always best. So <laughs> the timing chain's on now and it's roughly in the right place. I need to set the cam timing because it is a modified cam in there. Uh, I need to go and grab some washers and some new uh, 5 16 UNF nuts for this part of the rocker shaft. And then I'm gonna torque the whole cylinder head down um, set the tappets, do the cam timing, and then just finish dressing some bits on it. Reattach his engine plate. Put the um, flywheel on it, but it's got to come off the stand for the flywheel, so that will go on last. I used to be able to pick these engines up by myself, but not anymore. Everything gets heavier. I've also got to put the, taint, the chain tensioner on the front, the lock tab for the camshaft and the crankshaft. But what I'll do is I'll just carry on doing these bits. I also, on the end of the rocker shafts, it, it has a spring and a flat and then two um, split pins to go in there and there. So I'll get them now as well and do them bits sort of. Pardon me so I don't forget. So it's time for the head to be torqued down now. Um, the torque wrench setting for one of these cylinder heads is 50 foot pound. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do it in stages. So I'm gonna go to 25 foot pound first. And then basically on one of these, I kind of do it as like a whirlpool like that, just work my way out. And the reason I do 25 foot pound first is because once I've got 25 foot pound of torque 
on all of the nuts. I then check the nuts in the center. That will the rocker shaft down also. So deep socket on these because this extra bit of stud that you might notice here and here compared to here and here, this is what the rocker shaft then bolts down to. It has little long nuts that lock the rocker shaft, uh, the rocker cover, sorry, down onto that. So these ones, I'm going to bring these ones down so they are bang on 25. So I'm not going to be pulling on the torque wrench like I was earlier. I'm just bringing it down nice and steady. Right, so up to 50. And now I won't be so aggressive on the torque wrench as soon as I get close. I'll then try and put the same amount of pressure onto the torque wrench. And I'm just quickly just make sure that all the rest are okay. Which looks like they are, this is not really moving any. Normally the centre couple move a bit more round. When you talk the head down, yeah, you see that one did. And then back down to 25 to check the rocker shaft nuts once again. And that's it. So I've got the tappet chests on the block now. And the next thing to put in is the oil pressure relief valve. So that, I've just put it in just so I can get some build lube down there. But if I just take it back out. So basically, once the engine builds up pressure, it then pushes that plunger backwards against the spring. So the spring is what controls the pressure. And then once it gets past this little hole, or I say little, this hole down the pressure relief bore, the oil then flows back to the sump of the, okay. sump of the engine the tappet clearances or the valve clearances for this cam this kent cam the valve clearances for this are 16 thou so i've got my feeler gauge i've got it where cylinder one is is rocking on the inlet and exhaust valve so i'm going to set cylinder number four So the tappets are set, next thing I've got to do is the, is the camshaft timing. The cam timing is done by adjusting this vernier timing wheel. So the first thing that I need to do is find Trudy TDC and then I'm going to do one complete revolution, or well two crankshaft revolutions, one camshaft revolution, just to make sure that I'm still at my pointer. So the next thing I need to do now is to find this full lift into crankshaft degrees on the inlet valve. So I know that it goes exhaust inlet on this MGB, so I'm setting it up off the inlet valve. And what I'm gonna do is turn the engine over until the inlet valve starts to open 
and then I'll slow everything down to take my readings. So I want it, the, the figure that I'm looking to set the, the timing to, to is 108 degrees. So at the moment it's at 95 degrees and I want that at 108. So what I'm gonna do is undo the vernier timing wheel. So what I'm gonna do now as much as, it, as it's a bit of a pain, is I'm gonna move the, um, I'm gonna move the vernier around one tooth. The reason I'm doing that is because I've got the timing right, but I'm right up on the stops of the vernier. Um, and that just annoys me a little bit, to be honest. So if I move it around a tooth, that should put it just about bang in the center of the vernier. So, so with a little bit of filling around with the vernier, moving it over one tooth, I've now got the timing set to exactly 108 degrees, which is what Kent Cams recommends. Uh, the tappets are set to 16th hour, which is also what Kent Cams recommends. So I'm gonna record this in my engine build sheet. So I've got it to go back to in case I ever need it. So all I've got to do now is put on the timing chain tensioner take the protractor off the front, tighten up the rest of the vernier bolts, tighten up the, cam the camshaft pulley, bend the lock tab round and get the front cover on. Put the water pump on. So the last thing that I've got to do on the MGB is fit the distributor drive. This is pretty easy to do. You can either use an old rocker stud or uh, an oil pump stud or even just a 5 16 long bolt. So you just screw it into the bottom of that because there's a 5 16 UNF thread in the bottom. Lubricate all the bottom of the drive up and then it's got an offset dog. With the engine firing on number one, so TDC, with the, with the rockers rocking like that, what you want is this offset dog pointing upwards like that. And there we are, that's in. And then if we could if we could put a line from there, that would go to number one. So the next thing to do is for me to fit that, but I'm gonna give that a wire wheel up first. So this is it, this is the MGBNG complete. So brief rundown, but you, you would have watched it in this video. Um, my customer that I do quite a lot of work for, Beach Your Garage, uh, let me do the recondition on, on Paul's engine. So between me, Beach Hill, Will it Beach Hill Garage and Paul, we've kept in contact over this. Unfortunately, the first engine had had liners fitted badly. They'd left the boring swarf in there, which had destroyed everything, which I'm hoping the video shows um, from a few months ago on the strip down. Uh, we managed to get another uh, late MGB engine to recondition. Um, the AE pistons are very hard to get hold of, but luckily we found a set of plus 30s for that. Um, then we fitted ARP, big end stud and nuts. I had the rocker cover uh, and the front cover cover uh, powder coated at ANC shop blasting just over the road. Um, then we had, <coughs> I've had the hassle with the cylinder head. I gas flowed the first cylinder head. Um, only to pressure test it at the end to double check it and find that it had a porosity crack in it so that immediately went in the skip which I wasn't happy about. Um, so this is another cylinder head which come on the second engine. 
uh, brand new set of valves, AE valves, brand new rocker shaft, um, gas flowed, lead free converted, new valve guides. I've used the original stud and nuts on the cylinder head because they was in very good condition and the old original stuff is actually better than the remanufactured. Um, I've high flowed the oil pump, uh, reground the crank, balanced the engine, um, reground the flywheel and set the tap hits to Kent Cam's procedure. So I want to shout out uh, Andy at Kent Cam's for supplying the Kent and the Ver uh, sorry the Cam and the Vernier for that. Um, yeah, Vernier timing wheel. So I've set the Cam timing exactly to what Kent recommend. And then all the engine parts were supplied by uh, Simon at Nevlock. So when it comes to bearings, gaskets, uh, pistons, um, everything really, rocker shaft. Everything else, oil pump has come from Simon at Nevlock. So big shout out to them. Just quality parts as, as usual. So that's it. I'm now waiting for Andy to come and collect the engine um, to take it back, ready to install into the car. The car is absolutely lovely. It's a later MGB LE version. Um, I think this is going to be quite a long video. I'm hoping you've managed to persevere and watch to the end. I wanted to do a video of a of with one engine being reconditioned from start to finish so this is this is the one uh next one will probably be a cosworth or a, a Vauxhall xc but um yeah thanks for thanks for uh for for watching guys uh, and girls uh, i hope you've enjoyed it um, i'm hoping the editing's come out well because it's been going on for a fair bit of time but once again i just want to thank all my um local and normal suppliers so nevlock kate cams um, ANC shop blasting, um, everything that them guys supply and do is, is awesome. So, um, yeah, thanks a lot. If you could leave the comment MGB um, down below, that would be great. If you're watching this and you haven't subs subscribed yet, if you could subscribe, that would, uh, that would mean a lot to, to me. Um, I think the next vlog after this is going to be a workshop update. So, um, there's quite a lot happened over there so hopefully that's going to be quite a good video too um, stay safe everyone see you soon remember to comment remember to subscribe please uh, I'm going on holiday so I'll, uh, I'll see you in a week oh I'll walk around the engine as well I also want to um, thank uh, Jeremy from Liquid Molly for supplying the build grease for the top end of this engine as well. So thanks guys.